<laughs> Keep it simple. Uh, yeah, we're back with game two of Power One Boys versus Ashen's E-Girls. Game one goes over to Ashen's E-Girls, and i uh, got to check the pool again. But it looks like... Sivan and Akaut are really close for MVP, but Sivan currently at 6 votes, Akaut at 5 votes. Uh, are we close on that pool anytime soon? No? Okay. Alright. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. Yeah, teams are getting ready for Game 2. Do you think the bans change at all? Is there anything either team is really worried about now after experiencing that first game? I... Would like to see Oriana and Rakan out out of power bottom boys because two of their most played champions are up on Oriana, Murphy on Rakan, and I'd like to see that Wombo combo there. I think it's just so strong uh, and a lot more reliable engaged than uh, Galio that they were relying on last game. Yeah, the Galio, I I just didn't. I really love it. The Kaisa band coming up from PBB being really scared about what Sivan can you know, do with that. We see mid lane bands coming out against Sivan here. Kogma and Kaisa, uh, definitely reasonable bands. Uh, and Hecarim, again a Hecarim I, band. I, 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 have, I don't know anything about <laughs> Sir Everett's Hecarim personally, so I can yeah. you know, speak to the testament of, the, of that band. <laughs> uh, yeah, and Orin's still up. Wonder if it's gonna be first pick as a count on that Warren. Uh, again, like five out of his now seven games on it. Rally and Poppy banned away from Front Lash, Lee sent away from Labyrinth. But let's let's see what happens with the Orin. Also, interesting what's gonna happen with Diana, one of the Sea Vans champions left up. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know how much of a priority the Orn will now be because I mean, the cat has shown that he can perform very well without it. <laughs> Morgana. <laughs> it could clearly, I mean, it could definitely just be more of a team comp thing. You know, Steven wants a couch to play Orn to be able to play Orn as opposed to a couch necessarily wanting to play Orn. Yeah, and I, uh, I definitely can't see. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to see that Morgana pick again because. It is a very reliable flex pick. I, it is a very safe mid lane pick and a very good support pick. But that ooh, a pike! All right. Yikes! So the real question is, where is this pike going? My guess some... is not bot lane. I've seen because... some pretty horrible pike mids and pike jungle. <laughs> so... I don't think we're gonna see pike bot because against Morgana, I don't think that's gonna go well. So. Keep an eye out for that. Yeah. We could be looking at a Pike for Sir Everett's eye. You don't really know what to expect here. I mean, a little bit. I kind of expect the Pike for C-Van. Hmm. But it could be anything at this point. It's not going to be for a Count, though. Uh, this is... Ooh, yeah. Nasus is coming in for Front Lash and a Sivir. Front Lash has been doing so well on his Nasus, getting ahead of you know, pretty consistently when he plays it. And the Sivir, the consistent, you know, reliable pick in PMA LCS that, you know, yeah, and, uh, seems to give teams just pretty distinct advantage when they play it. Yeah, so OEG is going to have to be thinking about those second round bans that they want to take away from jungle especially. Some really great synergistic picks with the Sivir, Skarner, Olaf, uh, Xin Zhao. A lot of picks that can go really well with Sivir. Now, now that I think about it, they could... So they don't quite give away where the pike is going yeah, not yet. yet. Uh, but I think they can just put the Morgana wherever pike goes and deal with them like that. Like Maybe. The Tresana comes out for Spooped, another late game um, AD carry. Very similar to Shen, you know, just you know, pretty short range early on, trying to make it to the late game, but at the same time, showing it early could mean that PvP... Oops, I want to forgot the ban. Oh, <laughs> and the ban from OEG. <laughs> Again, so, PvP, the Orianna ban. Yeah, Orianna kind of counting on this being a Morgana support. Or, uh, <laughs> trying to push them into that hole. This is 
Xin Zhao ban. They probably don't think it's Pike Jungle for that. Unless they're just really worried about seeing it again. It did really, really screw Labyrinth early on. Yeah, I'd, I'd be very surprised if this were a Pike Jungle. I, I just don't believe in it yeah. as we uh, might in be, any we shape might whatsoever. We pressing over this and just realize there's a Pike support at this rate. You know, I guess you never know. Possibly, I mean... Oh, again, you know, Blanc. So, some uncertainty as to where this pike could be going, or they are counting on it being support. I'm guessing pike support at this rate. I mean, they're not giving it away yet. I think. I think the suspense to pick the support <laughs> champion is because it will be mid lane. Uh, I mean, that's just my prediction, but... The Sejuani is slightly less common jungler now. The full tank junglers are kind of falling out of favor. Hmm. Oh, the Trundle pick into Sejuani. I love this. I love this because Trundle ults Sejuani when she has her passive up. When it goes down, she'll have negative armor. Ah. Because Trundle steals a percentage of her armor. Yeah. Then she loses a flat amount. <laughs> and suddenly she's in the red. <laughs> very, hard, very smart pick from Labby. So the Morgana will be going mid. Yeah, Morgana mid. Tarek in the bot lane. <laughs> what do we got here? Let's see. They're hot. Better keep well, make, me, suspense. make me right. Show me the pike mid. <laughs> Give it to me. Uh, support. Victor support. There it is. <laughs> I told you guys. <laughs> Well, the victor comes out for Steven, trying to keep, you know, Match Morgana's wave clear. Yeah, so I, again, I don't think this Pike matchup into Morgana is in his favor. It, it is Pike in the target, you know? Oh, shoot. Yeah, I was not even thinking. Okay, yeah, probably in his favor then. Tarek, uh, pretty weak laner, as I mentioned last game. Sivir, though, good, good pick into Pike, because, you know, spell shield. Uh, she stops his hook from hitting her, and he's not so useful. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think the thing to look out for is how Pike's gonna build, because I've seen them just go, you know, full-on assassin bot lane and gonna go tank, so... You know. I mean, there's a lot of people saying a lot of different things about Pike, like, oh, you just build health, the transition into AD is super efficient. In my opinion, it's not very efficient at all. Uh, I, I think going full AD is perfectly fine, like, uh, Duskblade's nice. Duskblade actually a great support item. It clear wards. It's perfect. <laughs> True. Um, okay, if we're looking at the MVP people from last game, Account and Steven are, Steven are now tied at six votes. So, Rob is begging someone, not Rob, uh, Rich is begging someone to, uh, vote and break that tie so we can have a definitive MVP. So if someone wants to maybe change their vote or hop in on that link, feel free to do it. Yeah, I see a very good, very good team comp predicted by Siren Delphi. Victor top, Shen support, Sichuani mid, Trish jungle, <laughs> Pike ADC. Absolutely, I agree. Have actually seen a Pike ADC. It did terrible at one, I was mad. So, who are you giving this game to, at least based on the team comps? Because I feel like I don't after the back and forth that was last game, I don't. I think I have to just kind of rely on the team comps that I'm looking at, as opposed to the teams, because it was just so, kind of really messy last game. I don't know if I can definitely just say that OEG will do better than PDB after despite them winning. Yeah, so... I think... It's interesting that uh, C 
Steve Van Sal and Victor champions played here before, uh, but not nearly as hard carry of a champion as Kaisa. Uh, the Pike, I, I believe this is the first Pike we've seen in the PMA LCS. I don't know if we have a. I think so. Certainly on that, but um, okay, it is the first Pike we've seen in the PMA LCS. So, depending on how that goes uh, into Silver Tarek. Uh, I think this bottling could be pretty, pretty big threat. Um, the Sejuani Shen beefy front line to back up uh, Tristana pumping out damage from the back. But if Nasus can get a lead and Tr Trundle can run people down the same way that Front Lash did in game one, I mean, I'm worried that. Pike won't ever get to assassinate anyone. <laughs> Trundle and Nasus will tear him apart yeah, in second. Ranks. Yeah, I, I don't know if Sejuani is going to be able to beat up on Trundle the way that uh, the Zin beat up on the Nocturne early game. Right? Absolutely so, not. Because a big part of OEG getting ahead last game was Labyrinth being two, three levels behind for 20 minutes, you know? I, I, I don't see that happening again. I mean, yeah. unless they're just like smite fighting for, you know, scuttles again, like last game. But I just can't see that kind of advantage coming out of two tank junglers. Yeah, and again, like it, it, of course it'll be after six that Chunda would have his ultimate, so definitely not in the early game. But once he has that ultimate, if he can use it onto Sejuani, the 1v1 is not a contest. Yeah. Sejuani is tankiness, it's gone. No armor. Negative armor. Uh, double TPs from both sides. Pike obviously taking Knight wants to go for those kills. You're gonna have to really be looking out for those TPs coming all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, no no particularly strange summoner spell choices. Yeah. So let's let's run through lanes. Uh, how do we think this bot lane's gonna go? Um I don't know. Sivir can harass the Tristan and the Pike because they're going to be such short range. Just kind of like stab them with her W and Qs. But at the same time, I mean, I don't know how scared they might be of the Pike trying to get some early kills. I don't know how comfortable Fudgy and Murphy are with laying against one yet. Yeah. So I think some of Pike's worst matchups are into tanks. Uh, and Tarek, like I, I can see a scenario where Pike pulls Tarek and Tarek just uses that as his own engage, and he just gets a stun off on Pike, and Pike has a bad time. Uh, it's like Sivir tears him a new one with her Q, but uh, you know, Pike with that pass of able to endure, endure a, a solid amount of uh, poke from enemy lanes. So we'll see if if these tra if these trades can go in Pike's favor. I think that is gonna be huge but um as far as the ad carries i think sivir has an advantage over tristana early game yeah uh just able to spell shield tristana's uh bomb uh and just in straight up damage and auto attacking thinks Sivir has the advantage uh, she gets a q off on tristana and tristana's bomb gets spell shielded Oh, coming from the mouth of Rich himself. Uh, himself uh, predicting PDB to win this game. Right, yeah, Akayu, game one MVP. Nice. By one vote against By, by one vote, the tie oh, broke. Oh, someone, someone hopped in and saved us. Um, I was See someone in the chat asking about the AP Sege. I don't remember her AP ratio is getting increased lately, but yeah, I haven't seen would... Sege in a while, to be completely honest. Yeah, that would be an interesting choice uh, for AP Sege. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I don't, I don't think we'll see it. Honestly, just the the AP item doesn't suit her particularly well, and I, I mean, I think they will benefit from having a bigger front line sh than Shen alone. Yeah, I think... What do you think about the mid lane? I think it's just going to be a lot of wave here, but I think Rob... <laughs> they're going to they're have very different roles as the game goes on, obviously. 
Yeah. Um, Rob will be looking to uh, protect people with the black shield because it could just, you know, negate Sejuani's ult every once in a while if we get it off right. And Victor, you know, looking to blow people up as Victor does. Yeah, I think Sivan's going to look for some kind of edge against Rob in this mid lane, but. Uh, and against Morgana, it's hard. <laughs> It's yeah. so hard because I, 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 I'm, I'm assuming it goes a little more evenly than the Galio versus uh, Kaisa. Yeah, I, I agree with bit. that. But uh, you know, Sejuani comes in for a gank. Morgana puts Black Shield on herself and leaves yeah. because that, like, that's just how that's gonna go. So Sivan probably not gonna get a lot of uh, advantage from the jungle uh, pressure. So Rob, Rob, gonna have a bit of a help there. Yeah. Just by, just by the fact that he's on Morgana. As um, far as the top lane matchup, uh, I think it'll be Wet Noodles for a little bit. Yeah. Nasus will scale up into something terrifying. And <laughs> Pretty Shen, much. <laughs> and Shen will eventually kind of be there, and I, I predict Front Lash tower diving Shen again, and <laughs> maybe it going seen, well, maybe not. I don't think I've seen any player in this league do as many Successful or failed dives as front lash. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's something we shall be expecting. Um, I don't know. In the top lane, I mean, Sh Shen is... People underwrite how much damage he can do early with just bullying with his Q and, you know, protecting himself with his W. But, I mean, as long as front lash just doesn't get solo killed or something, he will be huge because it's just so easy to farm against the Shen. Yeah. So, what do you think about runes here? Anything interesting? You see, press the attack from Sivir. Uh, I feel like that's an interesting choice. That's... I don't... Uh, she's such short range. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't really like... Yeah, and, uh, I was about to talk about the pike with Aftershock. So, I think... Maybe for... Counting on getting the early hooks with the, with the Q... Maybe. I've only seen them take Electric Q. I'm a little surprised by this. But yeah, he has... so... He does um... have a skin, though, so... You know. Yeah, does have a skin, so... <laughs> First Pike, best Pike, really. Um... Sejuani with three things happening Between that Pike and that Sejuani. Sejuani with three footwork, I think that's, uh... That's... Pick from a few patches ago that... That's... Kind of obsolete I now. See yeah, especially I think, with the nerfs. Yeah, the reason nerfs will sleep footwork. Uh, I would think aftershocks a little better, but maybe. Oh goodness! Oh, it's happening! <laughs> oh, the rapture. Oh, it sounds beautiful. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the end of the world. Yeah, no unusual early game positioning. Everyone's just taking their jungle, but I mean, after you know, Everett's and Labyrinth fought each other early game last game. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if they're going to be both running straight for the scuttle again. Well, again, if they do, I think Labyrinth has the advantage on Trundle. Yeah, I definitely agree this time. Yeah, both top planners just taking uh, grasp, so that'll be. Hype. Trundle opting to go for topside scuttle instead of uh trying to compete with Sejuani. Yeah, just trading scuttles. Probably not looking for a fight like last game. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, I I would want to start that fight as Trundle, having just gotten red buff while she got blue buff. Uh, and knowing that she has fleet footwork and he has yeah. pressed the attack. Oh, an early gang coming in from Labyrinth wants to kill a cow. Frontlash got super low. Cow is just getting autoed by Frontlash. Front I mean, sorry, but Labyrinth. Labyrinth is also taking some kind of minion damage. He's sitting in a pretty big wave there. He doesn't really get anything except damage onto himself and some wasted time. The Cerebrus is just farming. Yeah, I think it was. Dumps in Taunts. Frontlash gets the wither on, starts to walk away. Does not want to get killed by a cow. So, maybe poor decision making by Labby to stick around top lane as long as he did. Uh, I would have got the three auto attacks for press the attack and backed off. But Sejuani coming to Trundle's yes, blue buff, spotted. That ward. 
Oh, gets caught by Rob. Labyrinth. I <laughs> Labyrinth might like flash over that wall, but apparently not. And nothing really happening. Server's looking for another early invade, but they're a bit more ready for it in this game. Frontmost getting bullied again by a cow. Yeah, this Shen is doing a lot of, you know, like I said, people literally underestimate how much damage Shen does, being a tank and all, but, you know, he really can lay a lot of damage down early with his Qs. Mm. Labyrinth looking for another gank, locks over a war. Labyrinth is wasting a lot of time, unfortunately. Yeah, it really wants to compensate for that, uh, top lane, but, I mean, they might just have to... Frontlash yeah. is getting very, very low, but Cal does still have Flash. He needs to be very careful here. Yeah, they might just have... That's yeah. what I was saying, they might just have to concede that a, a Cal is dominant in this lane, and Frontlash is going to have to play passive until he can get some stacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking at the CS, it's, you know, panning out to be very similar to how last game started. c bands already with a pretty big CS. Not big, but, you know... Tensely, a lead of four and a half minutes is pretty important uh, to have. Ten CS also coming out for Fudgy. Another game from Labyrinth. The Cout jumps away. I really, they should not be fucking out this early. Savoy so goes into this, wants to get these kills. As Everett is here for a gang, jumps in, stuns uh, Murphy. Sweep jumps in, gets bomb on Fudgy. No, nothing really happens to the bot lane. His OEG gets very, very low. Yeah, power on a boy's spot lane actually making it out way better than I think they should have uh, in that trade. Sever is still very healthy, not even having to burn her heal, burn flash, of course, in exchange for both of the boys. Still has her potion. Dominates. Yeah, still has her potion, so not taking very much damage at all. Uh, and it's not like she even has fleet footwork for sustain, she's just not taking a lot of damage. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how I, I, I mean, Labyrinth keeps going for these consistent ganks in the top lane. I mean, this Nasus will get big no matter what he does, like, I mean, whether or not he gets, like, gives him ganks or not, I think he should be focusing other lanes. As Twilish jumps in, he's, drops a Q and does not kill a cat who flashes away with almost no HP. Shoot. Oh, Labby's but they want to kill, Labby's ready to kill him, Labby he's gets pinched. up into the W. Twilish gets the first blood. Plus six, bops him with the Q. Very, very smart play from Labby. Yeah, the ganks do end thought. up working after the fourth try. Yeah, it <laughs> took a minute, but they Frontlash got it. gets the kill, they finally made it work. Ooh, so I feel like... TPing in, he might just want to go for a kill on Frontlash, but Frontlash is six now. He could just, you know, pop that and walk away. Yes, yeah, wrong. Oh, misses the E. Server is just looking for a kill. Man, nothing. Yeah. I mean, I think he had to try it. He had the ward to teleport to. Yeah, there's no so. reason not to. But uh, to boy in this on Pike in this bot lane, not really showing up in the way I would expect Pike to to do. He's uh. He's not really having a lot of kill pressure, grabbing a minion there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Tristana, I mean, just as a champion, naturally pushes so easily, and Spook just consistent under turret. They're not having a good time in that bot lane for OBG. I mean, Tristana definitely uh, pushes pretty hard, but so does Sever with the Ricochet. Looks That's like she's true. using it on every wave. Not. If there's anyone that can outpush him, just thought it will be the silver. That is, that is true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we see Sever using Ricochet twice on that wave alone. Yeah. Definitely with the gold to shove them under tower. Sichuani so wasting some time down bot. Uh, does not see them recalling. Looking uh, uh, at the mid lane real quick, Steven has a 20 CS, but he's at 10 CS per minute right now. Not as far ahead as he was against the Galio, but Rod's not doing great. Going for an early Seeker just wants to go straight into the zones, actually. Yeah, and I think that's to be expected uh, as a Morgana uh, into Victor, and especially a player like Sivan to be ahead in lane. Uh, just goes to be expected. Rob known uh, not really for his 
individual carry performance, but more uh, supportive performance, and it's it's worked. Yeah. So as long as he survives this lane, does not feed Z Van. I think Rob's doing his job just the way he needs to. Yep, OEG hopping in for an early dragon. I think this is a you know I mean we mentioned it a lot last game, but. I think it's really underrated how much their dragon control has been helping them a lot. They're consistently grabbing these. Whenever the um, PvP bot lane backs, they got, I mean, five dragons last game, grabbed one in eight minutes now, and it's a mountain drake, which is really pretty nice to have as the game goes on. Yeah, let's check up on Nasus' stacks at 102, just now getting his 100th stack. Alright, not bad at all. Yeah, so he's keeping up. Uh, I think he... Yeah, with one kill on him now, and the Sheen completed. Big item. So, I think he will start to be a threat. Shen being pushed under tower uh, in a way he really wasn't for most of this game so far and a lot of last game. Yeah, probably is getting a lot of damage on the Oof. Yeah, those those Qs hurt. He's definitely, he can't... he's definitely feeling a dive. I don't know. I, I think he is feeling well, a dive. Good, but he's like, he's he's right under that turret range, just before, just like right outside of it, <laughs> looking, looking for this kill. He tastes blood. A cow jumps out, taunts front lash. Does not go for a Q onto a cow. Yeah, Ooh. I think he's saving these Qs uh, until the lock from Shen, the Shen's W is yeah. gone. And just, you know, taking his time, 15 CS ahead, building up these stacks, misses a CS. Sad. <sighs> yeah. I think the warding's gotten a little bit better this game, too. A lot of pink boards being placed. Two by uh, OEG so far, one by uh, PBB. Uh, two by PBB, so, you know, both are, both teams are stepping it up just a little bit by uh, with the warding. Because mm. I think by 10 minutes last game, it had been a little bit bloodier than this. <laughs> Yeah, last game, they're well oh, over gets a kill ulted by a cow, just uh, flashes away from Rob's Q. Rob is getting blown up by C-Van with his ult, but just flashes away as Labyrinth drops uh, a uh, pillar, a traffic cone. Yeah, no. hmm. Oh, but the uh, Pike grabs the uh, Morgana, the Servants ults in. Rob does, Rob does die to C-Van, who wants uh, to get the kill. Uh, who died there? Sir Everett's actually died there. He got very, very low. Yeah, the Pike trying to, you know, doing doing Pike things, hopping in, trying to get his team those kills. Yeah, now C Van uh, upgrading his hex core, 30 CS uh, ahead. Really starting to, you know, get pretty relevant. Doing a lot of damage. Morgana already has a broken stopwatch. So she has to be very, very careful until the zone is completed. So Sivan's still with a pretty sizable CS lead over uh, Rob, but Fungi did it in bot lane. 15 CS over Spooped. Yes. That's, that's starting uh, to matter. Yeah, Fudge going for the uh, will most likely be an Essence Weaver and Stoopling for the Storm Razor, I would assume. Yeah, we see there why uh, Fudge just opted in to press the attack, getting a solid, solid amount of auto attacks onto Spoop there. Pretty poor, uh, poor decision for a trade by Spoop. Yeah, Pike gets the hook. Nothing happens. Yeah, this Pike just being very ineffective, in my opinion. Uh, every hook he's landed has kind of not mattered that much. It's more for harass, if anything. I mean, it doesn't do damage. It's just kind of like a little like prick on the shoulder of Murphy. is just too tanky for that, you know, for the pike to just go in and kill. Um, in the top lane, Trunlash is, you know, trying to harass a cow. It still has him under the turret. So Everett is in the top side with ult. He might be thinking about trying to move towards Frontlash, but no, he starts to go towards the bot lane. The entire top rope is warded up right now by PBB, so it will be pretty tough for a server to get a gank in unless he just hops in right and try with an ult. Mm. But Frontlash might just like you know walk away from that. And I'm looking at Frontlash's items, you see the phage. I think this is gonna be the Trinity Force rush. Oh yeah, Nasus. Yeah, looking to 
do a lot of damage. Siveral. <laughs> yeah, Siveral throws out. Severance is not caught by the Tarek uh, stun. Yeah, the, the game, uh, the pace of the game is definitely significantly slower than it was last game. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um. No one's building banner yet, so. <laughs> no one's building banner, so it, uh, we can expect it might slow. It might <laughs> speed up at yeah. some point. We see this bot slow. towers uh, getting pinged by red side. They want to defend it, uh, yeah, so it is pretty low up. at about a third of its health. Server, it's is probably thinking about uh, getting an ultimate because they know how much the PvP god lane, you know, pushes under that turret, but they just actually, actually just recall. Yeah, as low as that bot tower is, I feel like, I mean, top is a bit of a pressure cooker with Nasus pushing Shen in constantly and yeah. harassing him with those Qs under his own tower. Yeah, no one's come to stop this Nasus at all. He's just kind of been, you know, farming up. Now 25 CS ahead uh, at over 200 stacks. 219 stacks now in 14 minutes. Yeah, and that noodle's drying out. Very that good. that Nasus pretty soon is going to be a very hard noodle. <laughs> yeah, Nasus is dry, just hard noodle. about a wave away from being able to back for his Triforce, at which point it's going to be very hard to deal with him. Uh, the air drake comes up. This time, Power Barn Boys wants to finally grab a dragon for themselves. Good on them. I'm happy for them. Yeah, good for them. Sir, so, so everyone's back. They they made use of it, you know. I'm happy for them with their dragon. They, they <laughs> earned it. Yeah. <laughs> a cow jumping on the front lash. Front lash has literally no mana. Yeah. Maybe just enough for a Q. Couch. <laughs> Cow is playing very aggressive. Yeah, not quite building tank on that Shen so far with uh, his Joram's fist. That item's name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joram's fist and the Tiamat. Yeah, he's looking for the um, the early uh, Titanic Hydra. Pushing mm. power. I mean, we see how brutally pushing under that, under that turret he consistently is by Nasus. He wants to be able to get some, like you know, get out from under that turret, get some, you know, root to breathe. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty smart into the Nasus to be able to trade with him. He's going to need some damage, but that Trinity Force completed, and uh, Shen not able to complete the Titanic Hydra yet. That's uh, I think this is about to go in Nasus's direction pretty pretty severely. Oh yeah. Tiamat, I Tiamat Tiamat. I think it's Tiamat. Tiamat. Mm. A count, a cot, a caute, a whatever it is. Yeah, Labyrinth is trying to take these crooks. Gets popped by C Bank, gets so low. A count flashes after him, Labyrinth flashes away. They are on the wrong side of the map right now, but there's no one to stop yes. them. C Bank actually flashes over. Oh, C Bank, oh no. C Bank is now stuck. He was about to be popped by Front Lash. Oh, he is popped. Couch. He's done. Yeah, a count flash. I mean, a count holds in, but now he's getting chased down by Flash himself. Flash is about to get two kills here. And that's and that's the Nasus. Oh, the Nasus is on the line. It that's is the happening. that's the hard dry noodle, the hard oh, angry man. noodle that that is that is born from the sweat noodle top lane. <laughs> and Labyrinth uh, hops over the blast cone, gets the Krug he never got to take in the first place. <laughs> wants to finish <laughs> it off. That is a noodle with some vengeance to to unfold. It's a spicy noodle. This is a spicy noodle. This noodle's had a bad day, and he's <laughs> he's looking for someone to punish. Yeah, they're about to punish his top turret by taking it very early. Not not even very early, but taking his first turret in <laughs> 17 minutes, going on the side of front ledge. <laughs> Yeah, this Nasus is huge. Yeah. <laughs> huge dry noodle. I, I, I fear, I fear that OEG will not have a good answer for him. Yeah. Uh, we saw that the, the bot lane turn also went down for uh, for OEG. Yes, yeah, even there focused most of his damage onto Trundle, but uh, I worry that you know, he's the only one that's gonna be able to answer this Nasus and. 
Yeah, we saw how quickly Nash was able to pop him. Take the Rift Herald, might just be dropping in mid, get Sivan out of that lane. Sivan is starting to really pull ahead of Rob. Uh, Rob yeah, is but... pushing Rob out of lane there. If he had actually been able to get his ultimate off, Sivan would have killed him. Yeah. Killed Rob there pretty easily. Oh, Fudgy there's ult in, Rob does... Oh my... Not Rob, uh, Sivan is not able to protect himself, gets absolutely blown up. So boy is here. Oh, boy is Hawks front lash. Oh no, I thought he was about front to get lash. there. Mouse that's her with a Q. And the next front lash is about to walk around this map and just take every single turret. <laughs> he's got. Yeah, yeah he's got the, the herald. The next dragon is a mountain drake. <laughs> PVP wants that mountain mm. drake. Nasus is scary. Yeah, they're getting ready for it. It's up in two minutes. Grabbing the scuffle crab. <laughs> Am I donating a quarter for each time that I say the word noodle? Uh, yeah, we gotta look back in the VOD. Uh, Thank you, Frank. So, Shen able to complete that Titanic Hydra, but in retrospect, that, that might have helped him in lane, but... There is no chance of competing with the Nasus at this point. It yeah, almost I mean, seems. In retrospect, they should have just ganked the Nasus at some point. I mean, Labyrinth yeah. got Labyrinth had some ineffective ganks, but he ganked like four times in like five minutes. You know, Sir yeah, Labyrinth putting down the pressure that allowed allowed Nasus to survive that early game against Shen. Uh, his damage with the Q, but you know, once he survived that early game, it's he might seize Rob. He wants the rest it. Of this is heavily in uh, Front Lash's advantage. Just this, this Nasus, a vengeful noodle. <laughs> you know, looking at uh, they're starting the Baron. Oh, oh wait, the early Baron. 20, 20 minutes, right as it spawns, they are going for it. Yeah, so one is right here. Sees the trying or no be idea. She is walking towards it. Sees Rob gets scared oh, off. Gotta be suspicious. Yeah, they're all heading Misses there. Misses her Q over that wall. OEG is moving forward. They are. A There's gonna be some now. hard shot calling right now. Yeah, okay, Rob Sonia. Sign to turn. Sign the turn. ultimate from Sifr, the ultimate from Tarek. They are jumping in, completely just run over Sivan. And go right back to the Baron. Yeah, they go right back. That was a. This is great shot calling out. Yeah, from, Sir Everett's uh, flashed away. Akal wasted his ult. And they're going right back to it. Rob is here, but, you know, they can't really stop him. Their only damage right now is Sivan. Swoop is not strong enough. And this Baron's going down so slowly. It it's is going so down early. Slowly, but oh, PvP knows they can't do it. Backing off, yeah. So long. I think that was that was smart to threaten it and smart to leave. I think that yeah. showed a lot of uh, <laughs> discipline from PvP to know they just it's just not the time to do yeah. it. Oh, and as we see mid lane, Tarek has dropped a banner command minion. And if I hit banner command, that's a. <sighs> Harold in bot lane with Nasus. Yeah, true. The powers. ultimate banner from that minion. The most powerful minion in the game. And dragons now being taken. Nasus will be breaking down these turrets. Yeah, they have to send Sivan and uh, Spoops just to answer. Yeah, you answer hit Sivan. Yeah, now all five members of PBB in bot lane, they're going to have to bring someone to this tower. Is done. Yeah, OEG is rotating too slowly. A cow is. Jumping back and forth between the mid and top, he wants to get the top wave. Oh. He does not have ult. Yeah, and PVP backs backs off with you know a lot of gold gained, a lot of turrets taken very recently, and grab grab the um, Rift Herald before backing. Frontlash is currently at. 372 stacks. Looking he's like... 3,000 gold over the Shen. Is he really? Yeah. Oh, he's 303 and Shen is 0 and 2, so... Yeah, yeah with a 30 CS lead. Yeah, Sivan with the so... only kill, but I mean, he, he's literally the only damage. Spooked is so weak right now. He actually didn't go for the Storm so he went for the... Um, he's going... Um, Shiv first, so I mean, he, he does nothing. The Sejuani went Banner... Um, you know, 
there's just so little damage coming out from the side of OEG. It's all on Steven, and Steven just does not do enough against Snassus, who now has Merchant and it's building. There's a Spear Message being built by both Frontlash and Labyrinth. They know who to build for now. Yeah, and a gold lead building up. Four turrets to zero. I mean, the, the side of OEG has a lot of gold they can potentially get. I mean, if they get any of these turrets, there's just so much global gold waiting for them to take. Because a lot of the gold advantage that PvP has right now is mostly the turrets. But Fajita's ults, they want to run forward. Steven drops a W, and nothing really happens out of that ult. They just kind of scare away from that mid lane. And they're getting together to push it. You know, I mean... OEG will just never get this global gold if they're not able to, you know, get past the mid lane. Yeah, and they're gonna need it, like... I mean, against the Sivir and Morgana, I can real I realize it's hard to push out, but... They they need to. If they can't, then... Yeah. It's gonna I mean, be very bad. Yeah. Also, I just wanna point out the level difference between C-Van and Zia Boy. Five levels? That's a bad... <laughs> I mean, I know mid laner and support, but that's such a huge level difference. Boy, I think it's on him. He's very far behind. Two level, yeah, one level behind uh, Murphy Rauta, the Tarek on the opposite side. Yeah. Tarek is starting with Aegis now, building into it. It looks like a team ad. Not really sure what he's going for with that build. Labyrinth yeah. gets caught by C Van, and C Van runs away. But now Farlash finds them. Bop C Van with a Q, taking a third of his health. So C Boy is getting, you know. Oh, a massive ult from C-Van is melting them, but it's just not doing enough! The ult yeah. comes out from Tarek, everyone's protected from C-Van, who's still the only damage. Savoy just gets killed. Yeah, C-Van... Without any other damage to... coming... Without any other damage coming in, C-Van... Yeah. I mean, damage C is kind of negligible. He's doing what he can, but I mean, once, once his ult is gone, there, there is so little that's coming out of the side of OEG. I mean, again, Spooped is... He just doesn't have the items he needs yet. I mean, he's building, uh, let's see, is he building double, uh, zeal item before? Yeah, he's taking his time with that rapid fire cannon. He, I mean, the guy needs damage, he needs AD, he is so weak right now. You were talking about Tristana, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's just the thing about, uh, heavily crit reliant AD carries on this patch, is they take so long to scale up. Uh, I think maybe by 40 minutes he might be there yeah <laughs> but it's it's gonna be some time yeah i mean i'm a little surprised he didn't just go um storm razor into shiv into ie which is a lot, a lot of ac seems to be doing now with the for crit but i mean he's mm. he's going like the real long-term build and it's not gonna scale it's gonna scale even slower than tristana already does and that's not what they're looking for, with Steven still being the only, you know, serious damage on their team. Yeah, and fr frankly, by as late as Shasana is going to have all those items completed, Nasus is just going to be <laughs> yeah. too big. Yeah, but by the time she's doing any damage to him, he will just wither her and Q her, and she will j just be dead. Yeah, just one, just one Q. It won't, it won't take a lot. It just, I... Uh... Yeah, two barons, um, two barons, two banners now on the side of um, OEG. <laughs> they want to slow down the pushing that's coming out of PBB, who, you know, has a banner of their own. And as we can see, two Aegis is on the side. A Aegis? I guess. I think the plural, I'm thinking the plural is Aegis. Two Aegis <laughs> being built on the side of, of uh, PBB. AGI. They're, they're, ah, yes. There will be uh, three banners pretty soon. I don't know. I think I think Aegis are like Pokemon. You know, the, the singular is the plural. Hmm. Or it's S apostrophe. You just can't see it. A mm. cat gets a little bit of damage on Labyrinth. Labyrinth just walks away. Nothing to talk. Nothing going. So so many of uh, Ash and Z wards to clear in here. Yes, Murphy Rada backing out before he gets oh. caught. Never mind, Rocket, he is caught. Rocket's caught. Rob Zonia's the ult coming out from Murphy Rada. <laughs> Sepoy gets killed. Sepoy. That's a great this, time, Zonia's. Yeah, this Q on Sir Everett's gets him per almost killed. The flashing from Fudgy Ditters. The damage is coming out from C-Van. Fudgy barely gets out in time. Yeah, Fudgy actually with a really smart spell shield there, blocking the uh, yeah. proc from Victor's ultimate. 
and another Mountain Drake coming up as Anastas takes the bottom and if he wasn't even in that fight. I guess of Legion's, yes. <laughs> c has caught. He's dead. c gets stunned by Tarek and BOP by Farmlash. He is dead. Uh. Oh. This... Uh, this push by... by Powerline of Boys is unrelenting. Front Lash... It's just... Terror... It's a force of terror. A terror noodle on this match. 522 masses. stacks. Enormous. Yeah, Fudge is going for a much more reliable crit build, going, um, building his zeal item and now going straight into an IE. Nas is last hitting the dragon, of course. <laughs> what? What else would he do? Smite? Smite from Trundle? No. <laughs> no need. A third banner coming out for, um, OEG. <laughs> they they really want to slow down this push, but it, I mean, like, it's it's just not going to be enough by the t again. Like by the time that Victor is able to one shot somebody and and for signs up with anybody, that Nasus will be even bigger than he already is. Yeah. Like there's no real win condition for them at this point. They need to kill that Nasus somehow, and I don't see that happening. If oh, yeah, as C Man pops, Rob. Rob I don't think they're taking the right stuff. approach to stopping them. They, ch I feel like the smart way isn't. You know, try to counter the push, and Asus is unthreatened. He'll walk right up to that cannon minion and bop it the same way he bops everything else. He's unthreatened. They should build, be building items with damage to threaten them. Or, I mean, Sichuani. Yeah, and... Asus walks up. They're, uh, they're looking to kill him. Rolash, all so thin. Rolash jumps forward, tries to QC Van, withers C Van, kill, oh, almost kills him, God. takes half of his health, as the count is. Pulling away Murphy and Labyrinth. Frontlash is not able to kill Steven who flashes away but gets him so so low. I mean we can see that they like Frontlash is just enormous. I mean, they somehow need to catch up, but at the same time by catching up, Nasus just gets bigger. Yeah, Nasus they they should be building to be able to stop Nasus rather than stop his push. Uh it's it's an important distinction there where it's these banners aren't giving them combat stats, they need to be able to stop Nasus. Yeah, and with four people in the visible in the mid lane trying to save those Nexus turrets, the banner, the Baron is just getting melted by, uh, by QB. Yeah. And Nasus, of course, getting the stack. What, <laughs> what else would happen? Let's be honest with ourselves. Oh, goodness. Yeah, Nasus now, now 5,000 gold over Shen. Uh, of course, the two serving very different roles on their teams, but just looking that side by side, it's a tremendous lead. Yeah, like I was saying, I mean, the turrets are playing a pretty big difference in the gold lead, and um, so, you know, six turrets to one, and you know, OEG can't really get the turrets that they want from any of this global gold. Like, NASA is just is just always pushing. Rob's W. Melts wave, Sivir's W melts wave. There is so much wave current inside PBB as Fudge Eater's ults to push those two um, banner minions even faster towards that turret, forcing <laughs> OEG to back off from the mid lane. Oh my god. They are pushing those mi minions, making them kill that turret. The ult coming in from Spoop, the jump in from the side of Rob gets three stuns. Uh, Spoop is killed. Reference is killed, Akata's getting super low. Frontlash is starting to take damage from the fountain, but Seaman is not doing <laughs> up because so much life, so for every Q. Did they just then Nexus here? turrets are getting melted. Yeah, Seaman's C -Van, the only damage, his ult is gone. It's pretty much over for them. So boy, like pretty irrelevant on that um pike, unfortunately, and the game is over as PvP gets the win. The carry noodle on Nasus. <laughs> Oh. I mean, if we're talking MVP, it has to be, it has to go to the noodle for me. 
Yeah, I mean, he he drew so much pressure. Like, I mean, didn't die. Just an indestructible monster. Like, five thousand gold ahead of his lane opponent. I mean, once he got ahead, he did not stop. And you know, I've been trying to like look away from thinking of damage charts as like a big you know, sign of how well someone did. But looking at, but like, if we take a quick look at it, I mean, just, if you look at Spoop's damage, 5.7 thousand damage is this Tristana. Like, he, he at, at no point in this game was he, like, a relevant threat against PvP. Yeah. And frankly, I, I see a lot, a lot in the chat talking about how Banner was, uh, you know, the winning factor in that second game, I really disagree. I think if we're boiling it down to one item on Nasus, it was Trinity Force. <laughs> no one could touch him. No one could even approach him because he gets a Q down on them and their face collapses under the weight of Nasus's Q. It's yeah. terrifying. Yeah, I think um, Fudgy did a very good job acting as kind of an enabler for the team. I mean, God, he got three kills. He was looking pretty good, but at the end of the day, he was, you know, uh, more supportive AD carry. Um, mm. You know, as, as like a second, does. Second, yeah, it's kind of like secondary damage along with Rob. Um, you know, but it was really the nastiest show. We kept looking at how he just kept, you know, popping people. I mean, he had no fear. I mean, we we've I mean, I've criticized Frontlash myself for being overly aggressive with some of his dives, always wanting to go for the kill. He played a lot more reserved during laning phase, staying just out of turret range, never going for any silly dives against Kout. And by the end of the game, he was able to just flash in and start blowing people up with every Q, because he was consistently ahead and keeping that lead, not letting himself get caught. Although, I mean, at the same time, I mean, would you fault Sir Everett for not, for just kind of ignoring that top lane, letting Nasus get so far ahead? I mean... I, I don't... Hmm. It's hard to say, because knowing that Trundle was there camping the lane, I, I feel like in a 2v2 fight, Nasus and Trundle versus Shen Sichuani... Yeah, there's so would, much damage from that side. Yeah, that would pretty quickly go on the side of PvP, so props to account for surviving that lane and uh, you know, not yeah. dying he for as long he, as Trundle was he camping. He could, you know, he didn't... You know, he, he fell behind, but he, he didn't feed by any means. Nasus... It's it's more like Frontlash doing well than a cow doing bad in terms of why the Nasus took over the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, just yeah, Nasus just being Nasus, it just turns it. Frontlash on that champion is terrifying. Yeah. What is our MVP looking like right now? Pretty Noodle. decisively for front lash. Yeah, Noodles in the lead. And the big man Sean saying, come watch PMA SGN after the interview with the MVPs. Make sure to do that. Don't forget, there is two games happening tonight along with this one. So I think it's time to get some people in here for the interview. I would so. All right. So the captains of both teams would join us and MVPs. Uh, game two was Frontlash. Game one, uh, I believe, went to a cow. Um... Was that Cout or was it C-Van? Okay. Okay. He can tell us how to pronounce his name. Yeah. Comes I, up here. I feel like this isn't the first time he's had to tell, tell in a post-game chat uh, how to pronounce it. It was, it was Ben. Uh, I hate better command. I hate Hello. better command. <laughs> this item out, out of here, please. Nasus is the ultimate banner minion. Uh, Sigh. Fetus deletus. Out of here. <laughs> no, no, no comment. Just sigh. Uh. All right, I think we've got everyone in here.
Yeah. Uh, yeah, we do. So, chat, uh, go ahead and send in some questions, uh, if you've got any. And I guess we'll just start talking about game one. Uh, Victor's a game one, of course, Ashen's E-Girls. Uh, C-Van, how do you think that game went? Um, well, I mean, I think we outdrafted, definitely. And we had, like, a pretty decent key- team comp, a lot of comfort picks. And I don't know, it went pretty much as planned. Like, I expected PVB to at least do well early game, because they're a pretty aggressive team. And uh, both teams had, like, leads in different areas. and then. I think we just ended up, we had the one extra banner of command, so we actually won. <laughs> it's simple math, really. Yeah, it was three to two, you know, so. Three is we, greater than two. That's what yeah. I, <laughs> I think. Uh, so, Foji, what did you think about the uh, bot lane matchup in that game one? We were talking a lot about Kaylin uh, Morgana. Kaylin just smashes Twitch super hard, and. Uh, yeah, Caitlyn Morgana is also like a cancer lane to play against because you have to, you have like the traps and stuff with the binding. It's just all sorts of like things I hate in League of Legends. So I wanted them to feel my hatred of the game. Uh, and yeah, so we ended up doing really well bot. Uh, and like I got super far ahead. But the items now for crit are just so fucking expensive, dude. I was like, I was like six and one. And I was sitting on two items and components to fucking buy you. That tilted me. That tilted me harder than I think <laughs> anything else. Fuck crit, dude. Fuck Riot Games. But I love League. It's a great game. <laughs> I love it. It's awful. Uh... Yeah. I feel like if I built Banner of Command, I'd have more pushing power as ADC. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you yeah. wanted the Stiver so bad in the second game? I mean... Stiver, Stiver's second game was just uh, well, we picked the Morgana early, and we were like, okay, we can flex this wherever we want. And we played against Sivir Morgana, I think, like, either a, a week ago or, like, two weeks ago. And we knew that that lane was, like, dildo to play against if you played for Engage. Like, um, if, like, and we saw the pipe drafted early, so, like, the Sivir was, you know, a natural fit. And we also, when we picked Sivir, uh, we like to get you know, those guys that just like to run at people because Sivir, you know, enables that. Hmm. And so that was kind of the pick strategy for that game, too. Darn guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's move on to game two. Um, Front Lash, absolutely explosive on the Nasus. The. Were you, like, were you expecting that you'd just scale up and just be such a huge threat that they couldn't answer you? Playing as Nasus, did I expect to scale up? Is that the question you're asking me right now? I, I, <laughs> okay, well, maybe like maybe not scale. Did, did you, were, were you ready to kind of like take over the game like that? Well, we told like everyone across our team, we said just take this game slow and let it, we, like if we, if the, we're under the mindset if the game when I'm playing Gnosis, if the game is 0-0 zero to zero at 10-15 minutes, then we're going to win. Like, yeah. That's just the nature of Gnosis. So we want to take those games really slow. So we did. We didn't, like, go for aggressive kills or aggressive plays. We pretty much played defensively and ended up really taking advantage of just there not being a whole lot of answers for Gnosis early top. The fact that we got uh, Sir Everett onto Sejuani, it's not to say that Sejuani isn't a good jungler, but that early aggression that Xin Zhao or Graves or some other jungler that might have a lot more you know, single target damage early on would apply. Uh, Sejuani just, along with Shen, they just don't have a whole lot of damage to deal with Gnosis early, especially once I start hitting Qs, so. Um, I mean, question for the guys from uh, OEG. Uh, you guys picked the first pike uh, of PMA LCS so far. Oh. What was kind of the goal? Like, what was the what role did you were you looking for the pike to play in the game? And you know how you know uh, would you have done things I, differently? Maybe I don't even know how the fucking champion still works, so don't ask me. That. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, I'm sorry, I missed the question. 
just kind of like what kind of role were you looking for Pike to have in that team fight, and what could you have done better to make him have more of an impact? Um, well, to be honest, it was more of just like Justin wanted to play it, and I was like, why the fuck not? <laughs> and, uh, I mean, keep it, keep it casual over here. You know? Yeah, you know, I I think I thought it was an okay idea because I knew Justin had been playing a lot. Well, he's, he's, got, on it, he, so. he's got some really good abilities, like uh, the, the stun, the pull, the, the make Shen ult to you right before you die every time. Like, he's got a really solid kit. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. It, was, it seemed like a good pick uh, for Justin to play. And, uh, I mean, the only issue was we realized going at, like, into the, when we were loading into the game, it was like, if we don't win bot lane early, we basically lose the game because of how just like how useless Pike is if we don't if we like let them scale. Yeah, dude, and that's the problem with Sivir and a defensive support. You just yeah. kind of shove in and then walk away. Yeah, there, there was just, you. yeah, there's no real opportunity to get a lead, so that's just kind of how the bottom side went. And shout out, shout out to Stopwatch in mid lane. Yeah, dang <laughs> shit, dude. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't see any uh, questions in the chat. Just a lot of banner hate, which is earned. earned yeah, banner. yeah, banners just stupid. It's stupid mainly because like if you're ahead and you have Baron control, it just wins you the game automatically. You don't even have to try at that point. You just throw banners in a wave and stand next to it. It's over. I hate the look <laughs> of that icon for them item so much. I, I I've always ever since I've started. I've 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 been playing long. I've only been playing since like season four. But ever since I've seen that item and learned what it did, I just never liked it. Because for the longest time in the, in, in the later seasons, anyone who built that was like trolling or was a little bitch or something like that. And then now <laughs> it's this big old item that literally went to the game. Up like, next from Ragnarok, never liked this. ZZ Rat portal coming to you. Oh no, no, <laughs> no more ZZ Rat either. I hate, I hate all of that. Ugh. Yeah. Um, those items, those items suck. We got a, a quick question from Labyrinth coming in though for the captains about uh, how do you feel about your matchups for next week? Yeah, let's uh, let's start with UC Van. Uh, next week against Popo's Pecking Order, which I think is I think they've already played their game this week. Yeah, two zero against Zen Nudes. So how do you feel about your uh, next week match against them? Um, honestly, I I'm not like. I don't know. I don't, I'm not like too worried about it. I think we'll do do very well against them. Uh, we did scrim them a bunch before the season started, and that was like before we even knew what we were doing. So uh, we I think we took like one game, and they took like three or something. Um, but overall, based on their performance in the split, I think that we have a good chance to two zero them. Um, we'll just have to we'll have to play it right. I don't want to let too much information out because I've already been planning for it, but. I think we have some some stuff ready to uh, to play against them. Who's their top laner? Uh, their top laner. Starcraft, I think. Starcraft. Yeah, Starcraft. Starcraft. I'm coming for you, Starcraft. <laughs> 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 I'm taking the number one spot. Just building banner already. Yeah. Okay, right, now over the pudgy ditters. Uh, uh, inherently loaded question because me and Rafal are playing you. How do you feel about our matchup? <laughs> GG, easy 2-0. There you go. Let's wrap it up, boys. That's it. <laughs> I'm hi, hi stream. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. Um, go check out the PMA SGN or PMA LOL channels. We got two more matches going on. So, um, schedule for week six will be out soon. And until next time, good night, y'all. <laughs>